Okay, today we're gonna move on to some more fraction lessons and we're gonna really focus on decomposing fractions. We learned that composing fractions is like gluing the parts back together. So decomposing them, what do you think it means? There's a glossary here, but let's go ahead and get started on learning. So we have two pages that we're gonna use today. So let's do the first one and we are just going to cut it out and glue it in. Just make sure you save the directions because we're gonna need them. Okay, so decomposing fractions. Earlier we looked at composing the fractions by taking the parts and gluing them together. So today we're gonna look at a hole and break it into its part. So breaking a hole into parts is decomposing the fraction. So this is a hole. You can decompose a whole or a fraction in many different ways. So here's our whole, it's made out of four pieces. So what is our unit fraction? Well, each piece is one fourth. So our unit fraction is one fourth. All right, so now let's see some different ways that we can decompose it. If I look at my directions, it says label each section with one of the following. So the first one I see says one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals one whole. So how did we decompose that? Well, it looks like we broke it into four different pieces that are all one fourth. So this one is going to represent one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals one whole. All right, so now let's do the next one. We did this one. The next one says one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals three fourths. All right, so look at this one. It's been erased. So I think this is the one where we end up with three fourths left. So this is one fourth plus another fourth plus another fourth equals three fourths. So see how we have three of them? All right, now let's do another one. On this one, we have one fourth plus three fourths equals one whole. Hmm, this looks different. These ones have been composed and this one is by itself. So this represents the unit, one fourth, but we still need to add on this. Well, this is one fourth and one fourth and one fourth. So this is three fourths. So one fourth plus three fourths equals one whole. If we put them all together, it would make the whole thing. All right, so we have one more and let's see if it matches up with our last picture. One fourth plus two fourths plus one fourth equals one whole. And that's exactly what we see here. One fourth plus two fourths plus one fourth and that equals one whole. We could put them all back together and make it look exactly like this. So this is how you can decompose them. You can decompose them into unit fractions or you can decompose them into non-unit fractions or a combination of all of that. So let's look at it where we're not looking at models as much. So go ahead and cut out the next page and glue it in. Okay, so here we have some fractions and some models. And here we are going to decompose them in different ways. So it says writing fractions as sums. Remember a sum is an answer to an addition problem. So before we get started, let's look at this picture and understand it. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. So here we have eight eighths. Each one of these parts is one eighth. So we can de decompose them in a lot of different ways. Here we put them into two units and then we have these ones added on. Here we have them all separate. So this would be a sum of the unit fractions. One eighth plus 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 one eighth. It still equals eight eighths. Here, we just have two parts that we're adding together. 
but none of those parts are one eighth. We have four eighths plus four eighths equals one whole. And here's one more way we could do it. This time we do have a couple of unit fractions, but we have some other ones that have been composed. So here we have three eighths and three eighths and one eighth and one eighth. So the sum would be three eighths plus three eighths plus one eighth plus one eighth. So we're gonna do the same thing, but we don't have any models to look at. We're just gonna imagine it in our minds as we do it. So one of them's already been done for us, six tenths. Well, the first one says decompose into a sum of unit fractions. Well, I don't think this is right here. Does that look like a sum of all unit fractions? Something went wrong here. So this isn't right, let's fix it decompose into a sum of unit fractions. So since there's six of them, the unit fraction is gonna be 1 tenth, and we need to do that six times. 1 tenth plus 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 1 tenth equals... So we have 1 tenth being added six times. Okay, now it says decompose it another way. So this one's okay because it doesn't specifically say a sum of unit fractions. We can decompose it any way we want, as long as the parts equal the parts given. So here we have five tenths and one more tenth. So that does make six tenths, just like the fraction we've been given. So let's do it another way. Here we have three tenths plus three tenths. So three plus three does make six, so that would make the six tenths. Here we have another one, two tenths and four tenths. Well, two plus four is six, so this does make six tenths. So now we're gonna try one completely on our own. So this one is eight twelfths. So the first thing we need to do if we wanna decompose into a sum of unit fractions is to know what the unit fraction is. Remember, unit fractions always have a denominator of one. So our unit fraction is one twelfth. So we're going to keep adding one twelfth until we get to eight twelfths. So one twelfth plus one twelfth makes two twelfths, plus another twelfth makes three twelfths, plus another one makes four, plus another one makes five, plus another one makes six, plus another one makes seven, plus another one makes eight, eight twelfths. So we see that's eight twelfths. Now we're gonna decompose it another way. You can do them with a lot of these add-ins or you can just do them with a little. So let's just do it with a little. We could do seven twelfths plus one twelfth equals eight twelfths. Are you noticing a pattern here? You add the numerators, but the denominators stay the same. All right, let's do it another way. Could we do four twelfths plus four twelfths equals eight twelfths? Yes, four plus four equals eight, and the denominator stays the same. All right, we'll do it one more time. Let's have three add-ins this time. So we'll do two twelfths plus nine twelfths, that makes 11 twelfths, so we just need, oh, I went too far, that's not gonna work. So uh, let's say two twelfths plus, let's make this five, five twelfths. So two twelfths plus five twelfths makes seven twelfths, but we need to get to eight, so we're gonna add one more twelfth. And then we have two plus five is seven, plus one is eight. Okay, now I'm gonna let you do this one yourself but we're gonna do one of these together just so you know how to do it. All right, so here we have a representation of one whole. Well, one of our parts is missing, it should be there. So that means we have a denominator of one, two, three, four, five, six. So our denominator is actually six because there are six of these parts in one whole. But how many of those parts were shaded or were given? One, two, three, four, five. Five. 
So this model represents 5 sixths. And now we can do the same thing with 5 sixths. We're going to decompose it into a sum of unit fractions. So that means I need to find the unit fraction. Well, the unit fraction always starts with the 1 as the numerator, and the denominator never changes. So 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus 1 sixth. Now we have 5 sixths. And we can decompose it another way. We could do 2 sixths plus 3 sixths, and that makes 5 sixths. And we could do it another way. We could do 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus 3 sixths. So it still equals 5, 3, 4, 5. We could also do 4 sixths plus 1 sixth. So you can decompose your fractions or your wholes into a lot of different ways, as long as the numerators add up to your numerator and the denominator doesn't change. So I want you to do the rest of these, and when you're done, you can number your pages, add them to your table of contents for decomposing fractions, and you can even add your page number to your glossary to make it easier to find later when you need it. All right, I'll see you next time.